Hi kids, Annie here. Are you ready for an adventure? Today we're going to travel to the United States, to Springfield, Illinois. We're going back in time to my childhood for a hilarious story. Enjoy! I don't remember when I actually joined the Clean Plate Club, but my entire childhood was filled with you have to clean everything on your plate. Now, my parents always told us about the poor, starving children in China around the other side of the world. And the older I got, my brother and I offered to ship all of our vegetables over to them so that they could enjoy them. So I was forced to eat my vegetables a lot. Now, usually, my parents gave us a reward. If you clean your plate, you can have chocolate cake or you can have chocolate pudding. However, when that didn't work, my parents started talking about this dreaded vegetable. They started talking to us about how during my dad's childhood, when he wouldn't eat his vegetables, his parents would go and pull out the rutabaga. Now, Steve and I had never heard about rutabaga. We had only heard about it from my dad. And I had been shopping with my mom in the grocery store, and I had never seen a sign for rutabaga. So for a while, Steve and I thought, maybe it doesn't exist. But then my parents started describing it, you know, big and round and white and smelly. And the whole house would smell of rutabaga. And you'd have to chew it and chew it. And, you know, my parents started using it a little bit as a threat, like, even when we weren't around dinner time. Like if Steve and I were fighting, my dad would be like, kids, cut it out, or you're going to have to have rutabaga for dinner. And we'd be like, no, no, not the rutabaga, not the rutabaga. And this is just like burned in my memory. If whatever happens in life, the worst thing that can happen is that you have to eat rutabaga. Now, jump ahead a good 20 years. And... My life is changing. I'm moving from California back to Springfield, Illinois, back to my home. And I decide, since I'm having this huge life change, that I might as well change careers. And I really like cooking. So I decided to go to chef school. And the really cool thing was that it was a small chef school. And so if there were any leftovers and we finished our projects for the night, our professors would let us go ahead and just be creative and cook whatever. And so one night we're making this huge dinner, and I think we were making like quail, something else, some roasted potatoes. And my professor calls everybody to attention. And he says, tonight's featured vegetable is this. And I looked, at, I'd never seen it before. It looked like a mm, giant, maybe white radish. I don't know. Anyway, and he goes, who here knows what this is? And of course, Nobody knew it because we're in the middle of America where it's just mashed potatoes and gravy and meat for dinner. And he says, I'd like to introduce you to the rutabaga. <gasps> I thought I was going to have a heart attack. I mean, here in front of me was the dreaded rutabaga. And we were going to have to eat it. We were going to have to cook it. And... You know, the professor showed us how to prepare it and cut it into little tiny pieces. And when he came around, I told him that I was so deathly afraid of rutabaga because my father always threatened that we would have to eat rutabaga if we didn't finish our food. And my professor was really kind. He said to me, you know what, after you blanch it, he said, get some butter hot and put some sugar, brown sugar in it, and then cut up your rutabaga really fine and then just, you know, cook it over a hot fire. And... It dumped out onto the plate, and I looked at it, and my project partner was like, it can't be that bad. I mean, it's covered in sugar and butter. And so I took a little spoon, and I just took one tiny little cube. And you know what? It was delicious. I mean, it was delicious. I mean, if you think that, like, candied carrots taste good, you know, with like marshmallows or with butter and sugar. I mean, rutabaga is delicious. This thing that I had feared my entire life 
was actually really, really good. Now, the cool thing about my college was that, um, be, again, because we were such a small culinary school, we always had leftovers because everybody in the Midwest didn't want to take home the food they prepared because it had a sauce they couldn't identify and it had food that they never tasted before. So me and my partner, we always took home like boxes of food. And I went home that night. My parents were very used to kind of coming to me as I came in the door from cooking school and kind of saying, ooh, like, what did you prepare tonight? Oh, did you bring us something? And so my dad kind of called out from the TV room, and he's like, do you have anything tonight for dinner? Because your mom's out, and I didn't heat anything up yet. And I said, oh, dad. I've got something really special and really delicious. You just sit there. I'm going to heat it up. And I got the little uh, meat ready and the potatoes ready. And I got the rutabaga all heated up. And I brought the tray into my father. And he ate everything. And when I came to get the tray, he said, that was really good. He goes, what was that white thing? Like, that was really tasty. And I just stared him straight in the eye, and I said, that was rutabaga. So, did you have a good laugh? I hope so. If you liked what you heard, be sure to subscribe. I realize you can't comment anymore, but Mommy and Daddies can go over to my other channel, which is Annie Here, to hear more stories, or you can go listen to my podcasts at www.anniehere.com. Thanks so much for tuning in. Have a great day.